African Development Bank, AFDB, has approved a $27.4 million grant to boost the African Union's efforts to mobilize continental response to curb the COVID-19 pandemic. The AFDB said in a statement that the approval came following April 22nd's meeting of extended Bureau of AU Conference of uh, Heads of State and Government with Africa's private sector, chaired by South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, the chairperson of the AU. It said the AFDB president, Akimumi Adishino, who attended the meeting, pledged strong support for the AU's COVID-19 initiative. Speaking after the board approval of this operation, Mr. Adishino said the bank is reaffirming its strong commitment to a coordinated African response in the face of COVID-19 with the financing package. The bulk of the bank's grant financing for this operation, about $26.03 million, would help to strengthen the institutional capacity of the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention to respond to public health emergencies across the continent. Now we would be quickly speaking with uh, Tuposu Akejo, Reputation Manager. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Some would argue that the AFDB's $27 million for AU's COVID-19 response is coming a little too late in the day. What do you, what, how would you respond to that? Um, I don't think it's coming too late. Uh, the purpose of that fund is to strengthen the institutional capacity of the Africa Control for Disease um, Center. Uh, and uh, if we look at um, a case study of Lagos during the period of uh, Ebola, the systems and processes that were put in place and uh, the investment that was made during that time strengthened the position of Lagos as the epic center of COVID-19 um, outbreak. And so even though this fund from AU is coming at this particular time, uh, it's a future investment for uh, any outbreak because uh, you, you really can't predict this. And if we're going by history, we're going to have um, another outbreak in the future. Maybe we like it or not, that's, that's, just, that's just a fact. So I don't think it's too late. Um, and I still think that where COVID-19 is today, we don't fully understand how this um, is going to play out in the, in, the, in the next few months. All right. So it's important for us to, you know, uh, to continue to invest in that direction. With uh, the growing also, concerns over um, the nation's borrowing, is, is this initiative without clauses something that we should be worried about or curious about? Um, I mean, it's not entirely clear how all the countries will take advantage of this fund. Uh, but what is, however, clear from the information we have out there is the, the, the fact that this investment is going into Africa CDC for now. So I don't think that the issue about uh, borrowing is going to be a major concern for now. As, as far as this is concerned. All right, and, and also how impactful will the infusion of the funding be for the COVID-19 response? And also, how also do you think that we can ensure that it is properly executed? Is there any way that we, we can, you know, keep an eye on this? Um, I think it's active citizenship. Um, as more information is provided by AFDB about how this fund is going to be disbursed, I think people just need to ensure that uh, we can monitor the progress that has been made. Just the way we monitor the progress and news about COVID-19 because of how affected uh, we were. So I think that um, what we need, this, I, be, I believe that this fund we go into things like research and all of that. So we want to ensure that those research are by the best hands possible across Africa. We also understand that uh, part of this fund will go towards strengthening the implementation of Africa's uh, uh, CDC and, of course, COVID-19 pandemic preparedness and response plan through strengthening surveillance at various points of entry, you know, air, sea and land in African countries. Um, uh, our borders, of course, are also notoriously porous. Um, do you think that there's also the political will to go with it? Okay, I think, I think there are two sides to that conversation. There's the political will, there's the fact that um, we have porous, 
borders as a country. But what is exciting about this is that this fund is for Africa. So it's almost like there's a collective effort by everyone in Africa to ensure that we're monitoring and to ensure that we're strengthening surveillance. So what that means in practical terms is that Niger is conscious, Cameroon is conscious, uh, Benin is conscious of what is happening. And so even though our borders are porous, because of the collective consciousness, and then everybody stands to benefit from it. Um, but from a uh, political will perspective, I think that is more of an internal conversation for a country like Nigeria. Because um, if um, there's an outbreak, then Nigeria needs to be able to fully protect itself as a country. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Tubosu. Tubosu Akeju, for joining us. And we definitely will be speaking with you again. Thank you very much for having me.